Well, you stumbled on over to the Movie Trivia Schmodown YouTube channel. Subscribe. Why should you? Because this is the ultimate sport for the movie fan. It is the best movie trivia players in the world competing at the top level. Plus, our morning show, SEN Live, and brand new shows coming your way. And just as always, the Patreon has become the most, the most significant thing in the Trivia Schmodown because we want to make sure that for those people who are supporting the league, that we're able to give back and that we're able to treat the Patreon like a streaming service. We want to make sure that if you are at that $10 level, that you're getting the the, the big pay-per-views that we're doing, that you're getting the exclusive matches. We're going to be doing watch-alongs. Anything that we have that could be exclusive, you guys will get that. And on the lower tiers, you'll make sure that you'll get that a few days later. And you'll be you'll have all the access. You'll have access to competitors. There's so much that you're able to do. If you can't join the Patreon, we understand. Go on over and click a like. Share it. That stuff is important. The growth of the Schmodown is something that we wanted to make sure that we were giving to you guys. And hence why we put so much effort into making sure that the Patreon is worth your while. So take a look. Go on over to patreon.com slash Schmodown. Look and see what tier today is right for you. Go ahead. Check it out. We thank you so much for your support. And we hope to see you over at patreon.com slash Schmodown. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. It's the team's tournament. It's the last match of the first round. Mark Baby Caratellis, he is joining me here today. I am Christian Harloff. And Mark, what a battle we're going to have here between the former champions. That's right. John Roca and the current Movie Trivia Schmodown champion, Dan Merle, trying to get back to the spectacular and challenge shazam for the championship and in order to do so they have to go up against the witching power who came back from the biggest deficit in schmodown history to get here today yeah christian you look at this matchup and it really is a question of fatigue versus a team that is ready and primed to be back in the heat of competition when you look at the witching power who knew what they were going to bring to the table but wow do they look fresh rested ready to go excited to be back competing in the schmodown and they are competing at quite a high level and obviously we know what the founding father's history is but you i I think it's fair for fans and i've seen some of the chatter on the facebook page in places that Is this just too much for Dan and John to be taking on? It's a lot of matches that they've already played individually and as a team already this season. So is that going to train their brains? And it's just like they're going into robot form. Do they need to bring an extra dose of energy to this matchup? I'm really interested to see how these two different teams approach today's round one game. I'm I'm super interested in it because Perry Nemiroff right now is is trying for um, comeback player of the year. She's had a phenomenal season so far. Haley Fouch, who is, again, playing very well with Perry. Their chemistry is off the charts because of the show that they do together, working together. They trust in each other, and that's why they were able to come back from seven points against the Misfits in order to get here. Seven points. It's never done before. Before, that was six, and they were able to do it because they stuck with it, and their manager, Koi Jandrew, who they credit for their positivity, everything they've done. Now, the other side of that is is the Founding Fathers. Remember, after the Founding Fathers lost that that just that squeaker against corruption when they lost the titles, Dan Merle held up the the picture and said, this all ends in spectacular. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen with corruption, but it doesn't necessarily mean it had to happen with just corruption. It means that they wanted to get there, get those titles back. Dan Merle is going back to the spectacular. He's going to be there. John Roca has been in every single spectacular since we started them. If they don't get it done in the tournament, this will be the first spectacular that we don't see the outlaw uh, competing in. Well, that would be a shame for the outlaw and for all the fans who really love John Roca for the reason we all love him. He's probably the reason why the Schmodown has all of the great storylines and characters and cavalcade of different personalities that we get today. But 
All that aside, I think that this is going to be anyone's match for the exact reason you mentioned. doesn't matter if the Founding Fathers run out to a giant lead. The witching power, not going to panic because they've been down before and they've proven they have the ability to come back with the best of them. Will they cast a spell on the Founding Fathers here today? Will the Founding Fathers write a new amendment that says, Witching Power, see ya in 2021? We're about to find out. We're going to find out right now because they both have had different stories, but yet interesting stories on how they got here today. Here we go. Perry Emeroff, you are, have been playing uh, really well this season. Now you're going up to play Dan Merle and John Roca. It's weird to think about at this point how many Schmodown champions I will have played, and there is nobody that I would want to go up against a duo like that with than Haley. This is the face of contentment. This is the face of the Quirky Mercs co-manager, knowing with all certainty that today is ours. What they did in that first game, sometimes you just run up against some someone that's on a miracle run. Sometimes you just come up against what seems like destiny. Here we go, round one of the team's tournament. And of the mountains that the Schmodown has to offer, of all of them, the one that I have yet to summit is winning a tournament. Well, that stops right here, right now. I know the Bounding Fathers. I know their reputation. I know they're very good at this game, but we had some rock solid leadership in Koi, and I really do think just focusing on playing our game, playing it the best we can, and having fun while we do it is going to give us a chance here. The Founding Fathers do have weaknesses. The Founding Fathers have lost this year. We seem to bring out the best out of every team. That's the game, and, and I'm sure Haley and Perry won't be any different. They're looking to kind of establish themselves as a team, and I think nothing would uh, make them be even more fearsome as a duo than taking us out. Haley, Perry, I respect you. I respect your knowledge. I respect your skills. But unfortunately, you are in my way and you are in John Roca's way. When we lost that belt to corruption, I said, this ends at Spectacular, where the road to Spectacular runs through you. John Roca and Dan Merrill are going to be easy. It won't be simple, but we've got plans. We've got contingencies. We've got Spidey Cats. Wouldn't mind some, I don't know, maybe scream or dress park questions in the mix, but I'm open to anything. Today, the Quirky Marks continue their run, and today, Spidey Cat naps about it. Look at his little teeth. Oh, my little boy, boys, bring him some. Get a push of power. Let's do this. Double bubble toil and trouble. Your time's up. Mark, that's exactly what we thought. You know, it, it, it's it's the it's the can they do it story of the witching power. You know, can they 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 were able to do against the misfits. What will they do against the season team former champions in Dan Merle and John Roca? That's going to be the big question, right? Can they get it done? We know that they're beloved. We know that uh, how, how much uh, everyone is behind them. Uh, and then the founding fathers. It's it, it, this is. Is this their last run together? We don't know. Is this uh, is this one of those things where can they if they go out in the first round, should they rethink things? However, if they get it done, if they're able to get back to spectacular, can we see another run of greatness for what these two legends have done? And the other thing is the factions, right? The factions, it's everything because look, mathematically, I think I think mathematically it looks like uh, the quirky mercs are can't win first place, I think. But either way, it is still bragging rights. He's got he's got the team's champions. For you to be able to have the uh, automatic five points and getting the witching power there for Koizhandra would be big. But the other thing is knocking off the Finstock Exchange. The Finstock Exchange needs to win this tournament in order to even compete with corruption. So uh, that being said, though, the manager of the reigning movie trivia Schmodown champion Shazam and manager of the witching power, Koizhandra is here. And of course man who needs this win in order to keep his hopes alive bobby gucci uh all right gucci hi hi coy how you doing man let's Go start ahead. with you here you you know you said it back here on this um like little over a couple weeks ago and and when shazam 
won the titles on that undercard you had talked about when gray drake lost that you guys needed to win this thing this tournament it, it, the, the, the exchange it, you guys were the favorites you were the yankees kind of going in right now you're the yankees <sighs> yeah you're 100 percent right i mean look you know we needed the, we needed that win the other day we didn't get it unfortunately uh, i told everybody before the season started there's a lot of good teams out there and corruption is just playing out of their minds uh, and they got a nice lead right now. Uh, yeah, we need to win this tournament. And we got our best guys to do it. We got our Jordan and Pippen in this thing. So uh, that's why they're there. They're here to take it, and they're here to put us back into the spectacular. We, we can't have a spectacular without uh, with the, the outlaw. He needs to be there, and he's going to do it. All right, well, you hear names like the Chicago Bulls or the New York Yankees, and that didn't seem like the confidence Billy Martin might inject into his squads. And so, Corey, I got to ask you, as somebody who just has a ray of luminescence, a, an effervescent skill, if you will, that translates in your competitors so mightily, how are you going to upset the Founding Fathers here today, ruin the Gucci versus chances of doing anything in the tournament and running away with this yourself. I, I think we see every match as an individual match. We don't really look at the, we don't money ball this thing. We don't look at the statistics and weigh our options. We look at how we're playing. We look at how we're feeling. We look at what we know. People can't possibly know every single fact in every single movie, except maybe Adam Collins, because I'm not sure he's human, but you can't possibly have all that information. So we don't really look at this as what John Roke has done or what Dan Merle's done. We look at it as how the witching power is playing and going into this because we've upset people this whole season. We've been the underdog this whole season. So we're planning on playing that way. And even if we can't place at number one, I want a place. Even if we can't do what we need to do to get me that Modi, I want the witching power to know they're as powerful as they are so that next season and going forward, each of these players individually and as a team has the confidence to keep going. So it's about individual games. It's about having fun playing the individual games. And it's about knowing what these players can do. And I think they got this. All right. Well, we thank both you guys, both Gucci and Koi. Good luck to you both. And we'll see you in just a moment. All right, so we drop out the two managers, both ready to go, and and you know, and, and knowing Dagnino, he's got to be a little desperate right now. You know, this is this is a this is the last shot for him if they want to compete and try to win this championship, the faction championship. Yeah, for this. yeah Christian, and and I think I figured out Coy Jandrew's internet connection. I think it's fine. I think he just pours himself a nice tall bowl of Rice Krispies and puts it right next to his microphone before every match. It's his good luck charm. It's kind of his shtick now. It's just to have the worst sound out of anybody in the entire league. Maybe he's made of vinyl, and those are the, the snaps and crackles you hear playing a classic record. It is. We're looking forward to him cutting out in the post-interview. All right, so with that, Mark, I ask you, are you ready? Right now. Hey, it's your tomorrow. Well, at least it will be tomorrow for one of these teams. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing the Quirky Mercs, with a record of one win, no defeats, Haley the Firestarter, Fouch, and Scary Harry Nemiroff, the The witching power ladies are here. Perry, let's start with you. That match, I, you and I were texting each other afterwards, and I told you the biggest comeback in Schmodown history, and you couldn't believe it. Um, going back on that match and looking how you guys got here, um, and and uh, the same question I asked you last time, Perry, the the re the re spark, the love for the game again. Did that come back after that comeback as well? Oh, definitely. But I will admit, I still can't believe that that happened last time. I am feeling pretty good about it, though, this time, because we're going up against two champs, and I'm going into this match feeling like we just earned our place, and I don't think there's any better way to do a match like this. Haley, we've seen managers in the past inspire their teams and rally their competitors, but echoing Christian's question to Perry it was just an unbelievable all-time record comeback how much of that do you attribute to your manager of your faction the quirky Mercs? just it, it's showing us the one positive thing we actually all want to test positive for this year happiness 
Uh, Koi's the best. I think it's a, it's like a perfect trinity, right? Like, I, it's hard for me to be down around Perry anyway. And then you throw in Koi, and it's just a big happy hug that like helps take some of the pressure off because I'm going to love those guys and they're going to love me no matter what happens. All right. So with Perry Nimeroff here and Haley Fouch, ladies, good luck to you. We're going to put you in the waiting room and wait for your opponents. All right. And their opponents representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of five wins, three defeats, and four knockouts. The former movie trivia showdown, two-time teams champion and former two-time singles champion, the outlaw John Roca. And the former movie trivia showdown teams champion and the reigning Movie Trivia Schmodown, Champion of the World, Dangerous Dan Murrow, the Founding Fathers! The Founding Fathers, Dangerous Dan Murrow, and the Outlaw. What a season it has been, gentlemen. A strange season, an up and down season for sure. John, let me start with you because, you know, they were going over this and you and I talked about this. You've had some great matches this year. You've had barn burners. You've had these matches. You haven't. You had your victory against um, Paul Oyama, obviously, in the beginning, yeah. but a few narrow losses here too. How important is this tournament, not only for for you, but just in general for the founding fathers? Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, you take a few losses and you kind of recover and try to figure out where what the new tactic is, what the new approach is. And all you end up doing really is finding out that, hey, I've got all the knowledge that I got that I can have uh, at this point. Let me add some more to it. Let me let go of those losses, learn from those losses and see where we go. Listen, I'm the only player that's never retired who's been at it this long. So I was bound to take some hits. There are some great players. I was this close to Ethan, one point away. This We were this close, two points away from uh, corruption. So I'm not taking hard losses. The TKO was a wake-up call from uh, Adam Collins. And shout out to you for waking me up. And we'll see what happens. I'm, I, I'm relaxed. I'm ready to play with my friend. I've gone back to the season one approach of just having fun, being in the cage uh, with these great players and seeing what happens at the end. And I'm excited to be taking on Perry and uh, Haley, two people I've watched for quite some time the last couple of years play uh and do great do great stuff and hearing how they came back from seven points down they are no uh, there there's no push over here this is going to be a knockdown drag out fight and i'm looking forward to it yeah on the subject of, of tkos or chaos dan as you know usually i tune christian out when he's talking but i did hear him say that y'all have a five and three record with four knockouts so today are you looking to make a statement that the founding fathers are back are you gunning for that knockout to really show the world hey we are still the founding fathers we're still the team to beat in this tournament well you know john's thing is all the belts all the records so you know obviously with the faction points we want that extra point a tko or a ko would be fine but john and i are also very devoted to this game and nobody ever shows us up so i will commit i'm going to call our shot right here today John and I will come back from eight points down today. <laughs> and we're going to break that record. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know. Before we, before you drop out and start this match, Dan, I got to also ask you too, at the end of when you guys lost the, uh, the, the championship to corruption, Why you keep bringing that up. Why you keep, we've all moved on. It's ancient history. We've because, all moved on because Dan held up a sign and he said, this all ends in spectacular. Now, obviously that's not going to be against corruption per se in the title match, but does it still pertain to corruption? Does it still pertain to this tournament? Does it still pertain to the message you were getting out at the end of that match? 100%. I, you know, I, people, Obviously, with John and I as a team, we're out to prove that we, you know, we're not a fluke, that it wasn't just that we got lucky or whatever else people want to say. But also at the same time, you know, I'm playing it spectacular and there is still a chance looking at the singles tournament, looking at what's happening right now. I wish John was at my side, but there's still a chance that for me and corruption, this still all ends in spectacular. And we'll just have to see what happens. So it's going to end at the end of the year as it does either way. I would love for it to end for John and myself to prove to everyone, to prove to everyone in this league, to everyone that's naysayed us and said we're over the hill or whatever, that we got lucky, that they were booing us or I don't know, all the, all the excuses you hear. 
It's for us to prove that we belong here. We can do it the hard way. And also, um, if, if it comes down to a one-on-one -on -one matchup between myself and a member of Corruption, I'm ready for that as well. Hello, Movie Trivia Schmodown. How is everybody doing? Thank you for watching the match here today. And look, everybody has had to adjust to 2020. It's been a real uh, mind F, if you will, and it's, it's tough. And for everybody out there, you need stress relief that goes beyond just quick fixes. And you know what that is? That's Headspace. What is Headspace? Well, Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness, and it's in the form of guided meditations in an easy to use app. One of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. Whatever the situation is, Headspace really can make you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, Headspace has a three minute SOS meditation for you. If you need some help falling asleep, Headspace has wind down sessions that members swear by. And for parents, which was helpful for me, Headspace even has morning meditations that you can do with your kids. Headspace's approach to mindfulness, it can reduce stress, it can improve sleep, it boasts focus, and it increases your overall sense of well-being. That was why, for me, that it worked out, because like I said, with the kids and trying to say, oh, this isn't normal for a lot of people. This is this new life that we have here in 2020. So a peace and calm, it works. So check it out, go to Headspace, and it's backed by 25 published studies on its benefits. 600,000 five-star reviews and over 60 million downloads. Headspace makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule, anytime, anywhere. Here's the bottom line. You deserve to be happier. And Headspace is meditation made simple. You go to headspace.com slash the schmodown. Headspace.com slash the schmodown for a free one month trial. It's free. Try it for a month. See if you like it. Headspace.com slash the schmodown for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library for meditations on every situation. It's the best deal offered right now, but you got to head over to headspace.com slash the schmodown and do it today. You're going to thank me for it. One month free. Go. All right. So we're going to set everybody up here. All right, Mark. The competitors have entered. The virtual battlefield, what are the rules for round number one? Three rounds in the match. Round number one goes as thus. Eight questions are asked to the field. Yes, it is a team match, but it is an individual exercise of movie trivia know-how in round at number one. Once we ask the question, you each have 15 seconds. Write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have handy on whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Each team has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match named for famous black talking cat, JTE from Hocus Pocus. You also each have one challenge for you to utilize at any point. You must bring in your manager and then they'll talk it over and we'll hear the argument. And then if your manager wants to issue the challenge, they will confirm and ratify that it is indeed taking place. Christian, they're lined up. They're ready to go. Look at those game faces. Wow. This is Here just. Go. Dan Merle, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Haley, are you ready? Oh, yeah. John, are you ready? Absolutely. And Perry? That I am. Then let's get ready to <laughs> Schmodown. All right. Round number one. Question number one. Here it is. Action adventure. What actress plays Sarah Ashburn alongside Melissa McCarthy's Shannon Mullins in the 2013 action comedy, The Heat. Man, had a rough day today, Christian. I went to a chocolate factory, got a little too handsy with the river, got sucked into a tube and almost died. How was your day? I think you're watching something in your sleep. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, hands up. And Dan Merle. Sandra Bullock? Yes. Haley? Sandra Bullock. John? Sandra Bullock. And Perry? Sandra Bullock. All right. All the way around the horn as we get to question number two. All right. That is in the world of the 80s, <clears throat> the 1980s. And here's the question. What 1985 movie has the line, 
Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, he'd melt my brain. I've never enjoyed reading a question more. I know, I saw that big smile on your face. I mean, did you did you hear what he just got to say out loud to the public? I know. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Haley. Revenge of the Nerds. That is incorrect. John Roca. Back to the Future. Yes. Uh, Harry. I said Spaceballs. Uh, the Miss and then Dan. Hey, you. It's Back to the Future. That is correct. Founding Fathers going up here for two as we get to our next question. Here it is. What's All right, second? question number three. Which actor plays Henry Hill in Goodfellas? That's uh, Marty McFly. And Christian, you remember what cassette tape he put into the Walkman to sound futuristic? R.I.P. Edward Van Halen. More on that during the next question. Don't call me a moron. And five. Very smart, man. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And John Roca. Ray Liotta. Yes. Perry. Ray Liotta. Dan. Ray Liotta. And Haley. I got it wrong. Okay. So the Founding Fathers, six, three, going up by three here as we get to our next question. This next question brought to you by Chantix. And here it is. Comic book movies is the category. For a point, what actress plays the role of scientist Maya Hansen that Tony has a fling with on New Year's Eve 1999 in Iron Man 3? Yes, so it was always kind of assumed that wasn't actually Eddie Van Halen playing on that tape. It was just somebody trying to sound like him. Apparently, Eddie did go to the studio and recorded it, and that's what we hear in Back to the Future. Legal rights, they wouldn't let it do the whole thing. Five, four, three. Use the repeat if you need it, bud. Two, one pen repeat, stamp. please. All right, here it is. Just under the wire, and here is that question again. In the world of comic book movies, what actress plays the role of scientist Maya Hansen that Tony has a fling with on New Year's Eve 1999 in Iron Man 3? Just under the wire there. Obviously, we give a little bit of a uh, hint to the delay. Is, uh, where were you in 1999, New Year's Eve? New York. All right. Five, Watching the ball drop? Four. Three, two, one, pen down, please. And we start with John Roca. Me again? Okay. Uh, sorry, first, no, actually, yeah, that was the fourth question, right? <laughs> you will oh, speak when spoken to, Roca. Yes, I apologize. Rebecca it's, Hall. That is right. Yeah. Uh, yes, Perry. Rebecca Hall. Dan. Couldn't pull it. And Haley. Rebecca Hall. Well, there you go. So, Witching Power getting some. Richard Power getting a little bit of a jump there. 7-5 going up by one as we get to our next question. Next question. Here it is. Question five. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. What 1999 sci-fi Western comedy stars Will Smith, Kevin Klein, and Selma Hayek? Uh, so now the outlaw, the only perfect round left on the board in round number one. That's right. And we find ourselves at five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Perry. Is it Wild Wild West? It is. Dan. Wild Wild West. Haley. Wild Wild West. And John. Wild Wild West. Outlaw still perfect. And we see ourselves two point lead for the Founding Fathers. Nine, seven, as we get to question number six. In my opinion, no point should be awarded because nobody sung Wild Wild West. I did. You kind of did. All right. The next category is comedies. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Question for a point. Which actor starred in the 1980s comedies All of Me, Roxanne, and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Of which Christian Harloff is the latter. It's my dog. If you've ever smelled him, you'd know that's true. That's not nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, Perry. And Dan. Steve Martin. Yes. Haley. Steve Martin. Yep. John. Steve Martin. And Perry. I came up empty. All right. So 
Founding Fathers keeping a now a three-point lead here as we are see ourselves 11-8 as we get to our next question. Horror slash thriller. Who directed 2017's Alien Covenant? Yeah, you know, it's a three-point lead for the Founding Fathers, Christian, but this is right where the witching power likes to be. Yes, but it's also they gotta try to they gotta hope that John misses at least one and not get himself an extra point here. And five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Haley. Ridley Scott. Yes. John. Ridley Scott. Perry. Ridley Scott. And Dan. Ridley Scott. Okay. So three point lead sticks. It is 13 10 as we get to our last question. Now, if John gets this, then he and only he will get a bonus question. If not, we move on over to. Round number two. Mark? All right. See if John gets that question, but this is the question as to the field. Number eight, and it's in the category of animated films. Could be drawn by hand on a computer. Stop motion in there. Which 2010s Disney animated film features songs that were written by Lin-Manuel Miranda? Going back to that previous question, Christian. Ridley Scott, best movie is. Finish the statement. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. Pens down, hands up. And we start with John Roca. I don't know it. Sorry. Uh, Perry. It's Moana. It is. Uh, Dan. Moana. Yep. And uh, Haley. Moana. All right. So John doesn't hit it there. So the so it is a two point lead now. And founding fathers fourteen twelve fourteen twelve as we get to round number two. All right, and Toy is in an airport terminal. All right, here we go. So here we go, round number two. Mark, how are the rules? It is the wheel round, Christian. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each team gets a spin at that thar virtual wheel. Once you settle on a category, you're going to hear six questions in that particular realm of movie trivia schmodown goodness. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. Give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Why is that important? Well, stealing. Yeah, that's available in round number two. You can confer with your teammate for each and every question in round number two. Because this is the lawnmower man reality we all live in, and it is the team's format. Whatever team goes first, ultimately, is going to have their opponents kicked out of the stream for just a little bit so they can't hear or see any of the questions. If any steals are on the table after the line of questioning has been completed, we'll bring that other team back, ask them to steal opportunities, and then move on with the match and so on and so forth. And so right now, Christian, the Founding Fathers are enjoying a two-point lead, so they got something to talk about. Do they want to spin first or defer to their bewitching opponents? John, Dan... Gooch, what do y'all think? All right, we're going to drop. First, we're going to drop out Perry, Haley, the cat say? and Coy. The cat say? All right, we're going to get six seconds to talk. What does the cat say? Right now. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? First of all, great job. Fantastic, guys. Sorry I blew that last one, man. Damn. No, you're right. all good. Don't even worry about it. That was perfect. We're right where we want to be. Animation. Um, How you guys feeling? You want to put the pressure on them? What do you want to do? I think... Uh... I think let's uh, let's see what we let, let's spin. I mean, uh, let's uh, defer. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Do you want to defer? You want to go? Yeah, yeah I it? like that idea. Let's defer. Yeah, that makes sense. Let the yeah, let them go here. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, two JT rules left. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're gonna drop them out. So guys, you can stick around until you find out what they spin, and then we gotta drop out to the next room. All right, so we're gonna drop out founding fathers and Gucci. You can stay in the whole time. You just gotta keep your hands up. Bringing back Haley and Perry. And Koi, Koi got 60 seconds to decide uh, before we spin. So, firstly, uh, that was exactly what we wanted. You guys didn't let any folly like affect you mentally. You just kept diving in. And we never let them get more than three points ahead. These are the founding fathers. These are an incredible team. And you're not in your heads. And I'm seeing smirks again. I'm seeing happiness. There were a couple moments where I was like, wait, this is a, a fun time. Remember, it's a Monday. This is a positive. And now we're back to that, which is what I want to see. You guys are playing incredibly and you're playing smart. We have all of our JTEs. We're keeping up with the best in the league and we're having a fun time. And at no point have I been concerned. And now we're going into our strength. We're going into the second round. I feel very good about this wheel. How are we feeling? Feeling pretty good. And I feel like we learned the second round uh, strategy the hard way last time. So it has to be better than that, right? 10 seconds. Oh, I hope so. 
and we're much better off this time. So let's win it. Let's be comfortable and let's have fun. Round two is ours. Let's handle it. All right. So here's the wheel and here's the first spin by the witching power. All right. Round and round it goes. Best Ridley Scott movie ever. Looking for the counselor. Oh. <laughs> I like that movie. Uh, um, 80s, 80s movies, 60 seconds to decide, starting now. So there are plenty of things in this category I think definitely suit us. There are plenty of things I think don't. It's always a matter of out of the other 11 slices on the wheel, does this reach the upper or lower half of our goal set and how comfortable we're feeling? What are your instincts? Tis the lower half for sure. Yeah, and I think based on the questions we got wrong in round one, it would probably be good to spin away from. I'm very comfortable with the second spin on this, especially with what's left, so let's go for it. Yes, please. Right. Second spin, whatever they get here, they got to go with. And the Founding Fathers will see and then be placed into a separate room. Here is All right. Got to throw some WD-40 on this wheel, Christian. Oh, no! Opponent's choice. All right, lands on opponent's choice. All right, go. going to drop out. I do not like this physical wheel. <laughs> I wonder what they're going to give us. All right, so we're going to bring back 60 seconds, guys. 60 seconds to the side starting now. Uh, I mean, uh, they spun off 80s. Yeah, I mean, John, we, we, we talked about this. Yeah. This what was on our say? list, so yeah. what do you think? I would I would go that way. I'm, I'm leaning that way. John, what do you think? For the 80s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do that. Yep, sounds good. All right, 80s it is. All right, guys, jump into the other room, please. Um, and we are going to remove Gucci, who can stay and watch. Hands up, Gucci. All right, Haley and Perry, you guys are going to have six questions in the realm of the 80s. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. And it could have been worse. <laughs> Here, here's question number one. Who directed the 1989 rom-com, Look Who's Talking? You got anything? Nothing that I would feel comfortable saying without multiple choice. Likewise. Multiple choice, please. All right, multiple choice it is. Is it A, Harold Ramis? B, Amy Heckerling? C, John Landis? D, Frank Oz? I would take out Amy Heckerling. Uh, John Landis kind of sounded right to me, but I am not confident in that. We, we can ask to repeat the five. the choices without five. using a JT, right? Two, yes, five. The choices, please? Yep. A, Harold Ramis. B, Amy Heckerling. C, John Landis. D, Frank Oz. I was leaning towards A, but I'm really not certain. How, how strong is the pull to Landis? Not strong at all. I, I Ramis was the other one I was thinking maybe, so let's do all right. that. All right, uh, Harold Ramis, final answer. That is incorrect. All right, question number two. Which actress from TV's Cheers stars in the 80s comedies Night Shift and Troop Beverly Hills? Mm. Shelly, Shelly Long? Does that sound right? You could be right, I'm not certain. Uh -huh. I feel pretty confident in that. Do it. Three. Shelly Long? Final answer? Yes. Yes, it is. Two points. Yeah, yeah Haley. Like. All right. Here it is. Here's the next one. Which actor learns to take care of his children after he loses his job in Mr. Mom? Mr. Mom. I might know this with multiple choice. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. All right, multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, Bill Murray? B, Billy Crystal? C, Jack Nicholson, D, Michael Keaton. I think it's Michael Keaton. Yes, yeah, so do I. D, final answer. D, Michael Keaton is correct for one more point. All right, that's question number three. Question four. Name this 80s comedy by the synopsis. A test pilot is miniaturized in a secret experiment and accidentally injected into a hapless store clerk. Bardo? <laughs> I'm not gonna get this without multiple choice. <laughs> multiple choice, please. Okay. Is it A, Enemy Mine? B, Inner Space? C, Weekend at Bernie's? D, The Razor's Edge? It's either B or D, I'm pretty I, sure. The only one I was leaning towards was B. 
Let's do that then. All right, B, final answer. B, inner space is correct. One point. All right, that was question number four. All right. Here is question number five. This actress won an Academy Award for her portrayal of widow Edna Spaulding in Places in the Heart. I don't know that. I think I need multiple choice, too. Multiple Multiple. choice. All right. Is it A, Sally Field, B, Sissy Spacek, C, Geraldine Page, D, Jessica Lange? I'm not 100% sure, but Sally Field was the first person that came to mind when that was asked. Let's do that. All right, Sally Field, final answer. Correct for one more point. The guessing game is working out. Doing a multiple choice also helping as we get to our final question here in the uh, second round. Here it is. What 1985 whodunit comedy stars Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, Madeline Kahn, and Michael McKean? Is that Clue? Haley? It certainly... It could be. I... I that sounds right. It? Yeah. All right. Clue. Final answer. That's correct. <laughs> Sorry. You're just a son of a gun. Two points. Two points. All right. So, 1914. Good round by the Witching Power. They... They battle out of it, and they seems only one steal opportunity, which is only worth one point. So we're going to drop out the witching power, and we are going to bring uh, back the founding fathers. When you hear no, the witching power will stick around until they find out what their opponents have spun. Yeah, so, very impressive multiple choice around a category they clearly did not want, Christian. And so a five-point lead, it's something, and particularly if founding fathers don't give themselves a favorable spin, could be neck and neck going into round three. Cool. All right. So, gentlemen, uh, yeah. score right now, 19-14. Which wow. So, um, there is one steal opportunity on the table. It is worth one point. Okay. I will give you the question. I will also let you know what they chose. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. Here it is. Who directed the 1989 rom-com Look Who's Talking? Is it A, Harold Ramis, B, Amy Heckerling, C, John Landis, D, Frank Oz. Your opponents chose Harold Ramis. Ooh. My so guess the, said yeah. Amy Heckerling, but I don't know. What do you think, John? Uh, what are the three options? The other three options again? You can get one of those repeats, and that yes, is A, Harold Ramis, B, Amy Heckerling, C, John Landis, D, Frank Oz. All right. Let's go Amy Heckerling. That was my God. Do you feel differently, John? I don't feel strongly, but that was of the options. That was that. That was the one that felt the best. Okay. Five. Yeah. We'll say B is in boy. Amy Heckerling. Final answer. That's correct for one point. Nice job, Dan. Good job. So Amy Heckerling does it. All right. So now you're going to bring Gucci in here. And remember, guys, just to let you know, you do get a choice repeat on your choices. You you get one free on the on the um, opponent's choice. You get one one on on yours. So you do have one multiple choice repeat left. All right. So now we bring up the oh, sorry, Gucci, 60 seconds to talk to your guys starting now. Look, they're up five here. I mean, four. Two questions. Tie this game. Let's try to go home with this. Let's knock it out. Let's do it. So All right, work. let's get the wheel up there. And here's the first spin. All right, Chris, the max amount of points they could be leading by would be eight, which is the total they wanted to come back from. Tough break for the founding father. And Denzel Washington, Ooh. 60 seconds. Mm. How do you feel, Roka? I mean, it's been, there's going to be a lot of deep cuts in there. Yeah. It's come up a lot. Yeah, a lot. I feel like we should try it one more time, and if we get a Polish choice, we get a Polish choice. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I mean, I'm not I really scared by anything that they, we would get on opponent's choice. So okay. yeah, that's true. If we want to roll it. We roll the dice. I'm fine with rolling are, the dice. Are you feeling rolling the dice? Are you good? Yeah, because it has I, been I, deep. It's been deep cut lately. I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, so let's spin again. All right, here it is. So whatever the founding fathers get here, Mark, they got to choose. That's right. Round and round it goes. It's going to be Denzel, opponent's choice. We know they're looking for Western. Starting to settle on, could be Ron Howard. 
Uh, it's gonna be another spin. It was okay. 80. It'll be a sec. It'll be one more spin here because 80 is obviously off the board since the witching tower just went through that. So, all right, all right. Okay. feel the excitement. They almost had Ron Howard. And now, it's like inner geek. Them. All right, all right. It's gonna be an inner geek them slice. And I'm now, gonna go make some lunch. I'll be back after the round is over. <laughs> the, well, the geek it, happens. it happens. All, All right. right, we're gonna remove Gucci, and we're waiting for the witching power to remove themselves. They'll go into a separate room, Mark. And as soon as they do, we will start answering asking questions to the founding fathers. That's right, and like we said, Christian, maximum of twelve points available in this category, so there's no threat of a knockout. However, the founding fathers can really bolster their chances of possibly a TKO if they get some momentum going in the world of inner geekdom. Which John Roca apparently is not confident in. <laughs> it's all a smoke screen. <laughs> it would not be the first time. Ah, hello. If I've learned anything from from John being my teammate for this long, it's that John doesn't think he's good at anything, but he's great. It's true. At That's true. All right. So, Mark, the witching power has arrived in the room. Coy, please keep your hands up during this round. And now we will begin. Mark here. That's right. Inner Geekdom, gentlemen, remember, two points per question, unless you need multiple choice, which point the value of the question goes down to one. And here we go. Your first question. In X-Men Days of Future Past, who plays Bolivar Trask, a military scientist whom Mystique assassinated in the original 1973? It's a Dinklage, yeah. Uh, yep. Peter Dinklage, final answer. Sounds like John Roke a new one, Christian. That is two points. <laughs> Two points for the Founding Fathers. We'll get to our next question. All right. For two more points, in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the name of Argus Filch's cat? I know this. It's. I'm very confident, John, that it's Mrs. Norris. Okay. If you're willing to go with me on this. Yes, I'll go with you. Mrs. Norris, final answer. It is a Mrs. Apparently, she has spoken for. That is correct for two more points. Nice, All right. And all of a sudden, we're tied. And the Founding Fathers careen into question three in the world of inner geekdom. In Thor, what is the name of the enchanted Asgardian automaton sent to kill Thor? I'm going to know it when I hear it. I'm just trying to think if it pops into my head immediately. Five. Do you want to go to multiple choice? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we'll go to multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options for a point. Is it A, the Destroyer, B, the Obelisk, C, the Tormentor, or D, the Desolator? I believe it's the Destroyer. Okay. Uh, A, the Destroyer, final answer. That final answer is correct for one point, and it's a one-point okay. advantage. All right, here is the next one. All right, this is your fourth question of six in Inner Geekdom. For a possible three-point lead, Billy D. Williams has portrayed Harvey Dent slash Two-Face how many times in both live action and animation? I think it's I'm twice. pretty sure this is two, because he did yeah. it live in the Batman film, and then he reprised the role yeah. in the Lego Batman movie. Agreed. So are you good with uh, two? Two. Yep. Four. two times final answer. And that final answer will get you two points. That is correct. Good job. All right. Next question. All right, and this is your penultimate one in Inner Geekdom for a possible five-point lead total. Journey Smollett-Bell plays which character in Birds of Prey? It's Canary. Oh, is it Black Canary, Canary right? Black Canary? Is it can yeah. Is it, is it Black Canary or Canary? Son of a gun, I don't know. <laughs> well, we want to be smart here. We want to be smart. Yeah, I know sure. it'd be great to be up oh. two more points, but Three. let's go multiple choice just to be safe. Yeah. All right, multiple choice, your four options. Is it A, Cassandra Cain, B, Helena Bertinelli, C, Dinah Lance, or D, Renee Montoya? Ooh, so we were smart. Oh, okay. I mean, we could challenge on that, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's not A or D. It's Dinah Lance, I think. You sure? Yeah, I'll go with you. I'll go with you gut there, John. Okay. The Dinah Lance, final answer. Also known as Black Canary, Dinah Lance <laughs> is correct for a point. Woof. All right. Here is the next one, Mark. 
So glad and it's the last chance. one in round number two. Here we go. An inner geekdom. Founding Fathers navigating their way well in Dread 2012. Judge Dredd and his recruit respond to a call from a slum tower block where the majority of the film takes place. What is the name of that building? Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> Wanna go multiple choice? Yeah, what? Let's go multiple choice. That's a fiver. Uh, no one saw Judge Dredd. All right. All right, it's worth now one point. Is it A, apple orchards, B, orange groves, C, peach trees, or D, pear trees? Oh, this is Dread Dread, right? Not Judge mm -hmm. Dread. Is that correct? Okay, so what's your feeling? The only one that kind of hit a nerve was Orange Groves. Okay. I'm not sure. That's Four. the only one that I get. Three. Go Let's go with B, Orange Groves, final answer. Orange Groves is incorrect. <sighs> and so Witching Power is going to have an opportunity for a one point steal here, Christian. It's a four point lead in favor of Founding Fathers, but Witching Power could cut that to three once we get them back in the stream. And I would say regardless, still a well maneuvered round for the Founding Fathers. Oh, definitely. All right, so we're gonna bring back, we're gonna move, remove the Founding Fathers. We're gonna bring in the Witching Power. All right, guys, you have one opportunity to steal here, and it is with a multiple choice option. Um, and you do because even though you use multiple choice repeat on yours, it wasn't during a steal. So you do have that option should you need it. Um, all right. So, Mark. Go ahead. So it is the category of inner geekdom and the question. I'll get through the question and the multiple choice options. In Dread 2012, Judge Dredd and his recruit respond to a call from a slum tower block where the majority of the film takes place. What is the name of that building? Hmm. And your multiple choice options. Is it A, apple orchards, B, orange groves, C, peach trees, or D, pear trees? Your opponents guessed B, orange groves. I think it's, do, do you have an, uh, an inkling? I think it's peach trees. Let's do it. Peach trees, final answer. Peach trees, final answer is correct for one point. And Christian, that's a big steal. And look at this. Three points is all that separates the witching power from founding fathers. Both teams right where they want to be. Nice, nice job. job. Nice job. Massive, okay. massive uh, steal there. Great they have a the point that they lost, and they only see themselves down three going into the final round. Mark, how's it go? Round number three. This is the round that will determine the match. Let's we go to sudden death overtime. I'm having a good time. I'm up for it. In round number three, we need a series of numbers from each team. These integers may range from one to 20. Do not pick the same numerals as your opponents. Why is that? Because each one corresponds to a unique corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, curiosity. Your first question is worth two points. Next one is worth three. Final one. Should we be that far? I believe we will. It's worth five of the biggest points of the tournament. Now, this is the team format, so once we tell you what the category for your two-point question is, the team will have to decide which member is going to field that question solo. You may not rely on your teammate for the two-point question. The opposite teammate will then also have to solo answer the three-point question. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. Christian? Because the Founding Fathers are enjoying a three-point advantage, we're going to get the Outlaw and the Dangerous Ones numbers first. So, John, Dan, from 1 to 20, what three nucky numbers feel the most fortunate? What do you say, Dan? Uh, the only one I uh, – I'll take 16, and I'll let you grab the other two, John. Whatever okay. order you want to do them in. How many – from 1 to what? Uh, oh 1 to 20, God. as in every other Schmodown okay. you've played in 17. Okay. Really? We're going to editorialize now? All right. Um, uh, six okay. and 20. I don't know. I feel weird about I, I feel great about going all the way to the end. What do you say? Okay. Sure. Yeah. I like those and 20 and for the wishing power. All right. I'll, I'll pick one first. I'll go 17. Okay. I'll do three. Corey, you got to pick our last one. No, it's not. It's not 15. It's not allowed. Not no, you can You're seriously not allowed. The, man, nope. the manager can pick the, the last one. It's fine. <laughs> That's uh, right. 17, 3, and 15. 17, 3, and 15. <laughs> 16, 6, and 20. 17, 3, and 15. How quickly were you going to say, P I mean, Koi, you were like, Pichu! Uh, I, I can't answer. I can't answer. I can't answer. <laughs> 
I'm so sorry. I just wanted so much. You got 60 seconds uh, before you might have a little extra time because Koi's internet's going to go out. So go ahead. <laughs> Let's get it, guys. Three point lead here. They're going to have to answer their two and three before you have to answer anything. We'll take that. Um, you know what to do. That was a tough. That was a tough category. You navigated through it nicely. Um, yeah, I mean, in our geekdom, I was uh, scared, but we're up here. That's all that really matters. Let's uh, let's finish them off. Let's see what happens. All right. So now, uh, Koi, you get sixty seconds to talk to the witching power. Starting now. Let's hope the wind tunnel's on my side. Okay. So you all played as well as a team who's played. 20 times the amount of games. You did a, a incredible second round. You were able to steal a point at the end. We are in range of winning this whole thing. And this is only your... <laughs> it was good. It was good. It's a good speech. It started out really I well. I it. I felt it too. That's all that matters. Is he in a bunker? If he can get back, if he can get back to his 50 seconds, but I got I to be fair to where he comes back, if he's yeah. if he still comes back in time. Yeah. I think him and Jay are sharing the same uh, internet. I think... <laughs> Yeah, we got ten, uh, 20 seconds before he as he scrambles on his way back in. I got the best internet. No, trying to. My internet. Uh, okay, we're we, gonna do great. We don't need. We, don't, we got this. We got positive energy. Ten we seconds. Vibes, it's gonna, all good. He's gonna pop in right as the time ends. Probably. Five, five <laughs> seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right. Just win. Right, so we're gonna start and we're gonna remove Gucci, and now we are going to put. Both Haley and Perry next to each other here. All right. So the witching power is going to try to avoid the TKO. They have their two and their three that they need to hit in order to bounce it back to the founding fathers. The first one that they chose was number 17. Number 17. And that would be in the category of director. So who will be fielding this question? I could go either way. Do you have a strong feeling? No, I, f I feel like it's whatever the, the movie winds up being. What do, you, what do you think? You make the call. No. No? All right, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. All right, so Perry, yep. Perry's going to get the director's question. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. How many films in the Planet of the Apes franchise did Matt Reeves direct? Two. Correct. Two points. All right. So now, Haley, if she hits her three pointer, then it bounces back to the Founding Fathers, where they will have to hit their two pointer. If not, then the Witching Power will have to hit their five pointer to stay in the game. All right, Haley. So you chose category number three for your three pointer. That's thrillers. All right. So for thrillers, here's the question three points. Who plays the mysterious government official Matt Graver in 2015's Sicario? Five. You have the repeat. Four. Yeah, could you repeat the question? First one. Here it is. Who plays the mysterious government official Matt Graver in 2015's Sicario? Josh Brolin? That's correct for three points. Haley Fout hits it and bounces right. back. Now, in order to tie the game, in order to tie the game, the Founding Fathers need to hit their two. Need to hit their two. All right. So. The uh, mark there for their two, the category number 16. That's right, Christian. Number 16 for the two pointer in Joe Montana's legendary number corresponds to the world of fantasy science fiction. <laughs> I knew I'd get that response. So between John and Dan, who wants to field this two pointer? Do you, do you want me to take it, John? How do you feel? I, yeah, I'm not good at fantasy sci fi, All right. but it's a I'll two take pointer. It. All, right. All right. I'll take it. All right. Here it is. All right, Dan, for two points to tie the witching power in the world of fantasy sci-fi. What late actor co-starred as Matt Damon's younger brother in 2005's The Brothers Grimm? He 
Heath Ledger. We're tied, Christian. All right, tied up. So the founding fathers, we will stick with the founding fathers who will get an opportunity to take the lead here. If they hit their three pointer, that'll be John Roca in the category uh, number six. That is correct. And Sonny Jurgensen's legendary number corresponds to the world of comedy. Okay. All right, John. <laughs> three points. Sorry, it's sorry. serious in round three. We I, don't know. But you could get yourself a three point lead if you get this right. And here's the question In the film Borat, what famous celebrity is the title character in love with and even tries to kidnap? Pam Anderson? Pamela Anderson? And the founding fathers have a three-point lead. Yeah. All right. So they hit it there. So now here we are. Go, John. Good job. Thing power will be on the fence here with their five-pointer. They hit it, and then they force the founding fathers to win it with their five. But if they miss, the founding fathers will advance to play final exam in the next round. All right. Witching power. Four. Your five pointer. I'm sorry, Perry, but you chose the category of new releases. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. New releases. <laughs> and the five point question. Are you ready? Yep. Here it is. In what 2019 film will you find a character known as Medusa? Who is a legendary con artist who scams the film's leads? Sure. Medusa. You have any hunch there? I am struggling with this one. Medusa Five, scams. The four, three, two. Repeat the question. Second one. All right. In what 2019 film will you find a character known as Medusa, a legendary con artist who scams the film's leads? Oh my God. Is there, can you think of like a crime movie? I'm really struggling. Four, three, two. Repeat the question. Last one. In what 2019 film will you find a character known as Medusa, a legendary con artist who scams the film's lead? There you go. Five. Do you have any crime movie guesses? Three. The Gentleman. And you're a winner! Advancing to the next the founding fathers. The answer was the hustle. The hustle was the hustle. All right, we're going to remove the whipping power. And, and the founding fathers, they do it. But man, the witching power made them fight. As we see all the way to the witching bear's five pointer. Uh, all right. Dan, starting with you. First of all, let me ask a question. Did you know the hustle? Uh, I saw the hustle and I didn't know. It. You kidding me? <laughs> I forgot it while I was watching the movie. I got to the end of the movie. I said, "What movie am I watching again?" No, are you kidding me? <laughs> all right, so you guys advance here, Gooch, and you get to the next round uh, to face final exam here. But once again, the the Mercs and the Witching Power made you earn it. But how crucial was this win here today? This was do or die. I mean, it was needed, and we did it. I mean, the unfortunate uh, inner geekdom uh, slice, we got past it. They played well, you know, they, you know, there's some gaps in their knowledge, uh, Haley and uh, Perry, but they played really, really well against, uh, you know, the best team that ever did it. So I look at it this way, you know, we'll take this, go away with it. And then we're gonna play final exam and we're gonna take this tournament. We have to take this tournament. We all know it, we all know it. Yeah, John, on that note, no. do you allow yourself to daydream after this win? What's it going to be like? A, yet another Schmodown spectacular for you? Or is it better for the outlaw or for the team founding fathers to just focus on the next mission and not look to the horizon? 
The greatest thing is, and you can learn about life is that you got an overall goal, but you got to set up smaller goals to get to that overall goal. So for us, the overall goal is to be fighting for the title at Spectacular. However, every round is a goal we want to achieve, which is a victory over whoever we're facing. So I'm not dreaming or fantasizing about anything. To me, it's about whatever's in front of me. And then when I wake up one day and we've done it, if we've done it, I'm going to wake up ready to go at Spectacular. So this was a hell of a first round matchup with a very, very tough team. It could have gone either way with a couple of questions. So, uh, and I think, it, it, you know, it's been a bit since I played and you talk about all the matches, plus having a little bit of rust on me. It was a little nerve wracking for sure to near the tail end of there, but we've done what we needed to do. We're moving on now against final exam, but very tough final exam that was in the number one contender match, I think, and or, or vied for possibly being in the number one contender match. And so Paul Oyama and uh, Lon Harris are no joke. So it's going to be a heck of a match. Well, let me ask you about that because there's a bit of a story here too with Is both. There? Well, the first, it's the Paul Oyama story where it comes to John. He, he might be looking for revenge uh, against sure. you, and Dan, you might be looking for revenge against him. So, <laughs> it, it's a different Paul Oyama, obviously, from the one that I think that you played, Dan. He, he's he's he seemed to have a different respect for the game now. He he's obviously has respect for you guys, but he's playing. He's, he's not different as far as. Um, as far as the way he plays the game and the knowledge that he has. So how do you go in to prepare for a team like Final Exam? Uh, you get ready for it to go down to the five. There's no other way to do it. And I, you know, I certainly don't. First of all, this was an incredible game. Um, hats off at, to the witching power. The fact Absolutely. that they took us to the end, that's good because number one, I love a good close game. It keeps John and I on our toes. Secondly, you know, it gives me things to work on. I think I probably kind of steered us toward playing that second round a little more like it was a five round match than a three round match. And um, that almost snuck up on us there at the end. But with Paul, you know, yeah, of course, he took the belt off my shoulder. I want to beat anybody who takes the belt off my shoulder, including my teammate. Um, and I did. But uh, you, uh, you, sorry, John. <laughs> uh, but, you, uh, but then you also have Juan Harris, who now that Shazam are team champions, when people are talking about best player to never hold a belt, I see yeah. Juan Harris's name in that conversation now. So I think there's a lot to prove on everybody's side. And we both need to come ready because it's going to be a knockdown drag out. Yeah, and we can't remove the equation of Winston Marshall, who has become, you know, everyone's odds on favorite for manager of the year, much the chagrin mm -hmm. to our manager. So I know our manager is going to really want to step up and get us ready for this match and kind of retake that uh, uh, title away from uh, uh, Winston Marshall and uh, uh, get us in the right frame of mind to handle our business, you know. So I, I think we're going to be ready. We're looking forward to the challenge, and this just makes us even hungrier to go get it. So. Well, Tom, as your phone just does stupid things on your table, um, <laughs> I I will ask you this question. Um, Roka brings it up. You know, the, the this pretty much this is the end of one of you, of one of the factions next in, in next round. Whoever loses this, for, potentially, whoever loses this, um, tournament chances are over, and you could you could nip the swag run in the bud here. So, how crucial is it? I mean, look. You know, we still think we could win this whole thing. Uh, we're not in the, the spoiler role just yet. You know, um, that's that's for other teams. We, we still want to win this whole overall faction thing. And we want to win this belt. And we and Dan wants to retain his belt. That's 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 the ultimate goal here. Uh, yeah, but to take those guys out for sure, it'd be fantastic. We, we know we belong on top. And uh, I still believe it. And I think most of the FinStack Exchange still believes it, that we will be on top. We take this, take the belts, uh, tag team belts in the spectacular, take the uh, the singles title, and guess what? We're going to be right up top of the mountain, just where we belong. Well, there you go. You got Dan Merle going up against Adam Collins, obviously, in the main event of the spectacular. And now you have the founding fathers going up against final exam in the semifinals of the team's tournament. Gentlemen, congratulations, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next round. Thank I you. Shout out First time I've ever Paul. played Lon Harris. I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Perry and Haley. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Amazing job. Fantastic match. All right. Going to remove the founding fathers. And now, speaking of said team, the witching power, Haley and Perry, and of course, their manager, Koiji Andrew. Uh, ladies, what a match. What a match it was. A good fight. A scrap. It wasn't a seven. You didn't have to come back seven points. You were down only two going, or excuse me, three going into the final round. Perry, how are you feeling about um, your overall season so far? I feel great. 
even though we lost, we just played great. That was a blast. And I feel like the only new release question I wouldn't be sad about getting wrong is one that pertains to the hustle. So I'm so happy <laughs> that I don't have to lose sleep tonight. And Haley, do you? Uh, how are you feeling about the performance today? Oh yeah, it was it was great. Perry is such an amazing teammate. You know, obviously you would prefer to win, but we went up against two of the guys who played the most games in the history of this thing and performed really well. So I, I feel great about it. And honestly, who who's the loser for not having seen the hustle? <laughs> not, not us. These are great points that the Witching Power is making. And Koi, your team almost hustled the founding fathers. Came up a little short there. In round number three, you've retreated to outside where the sun is shining bright. Is that sun a harbinger of the witching power of the future? Is it so bright that you indeed have to wear shades? Oh, absolutely. I My phone overheated, but they didn't. They were incredible this whole match. I really am proud of them because there is no one quite like the Founding Fathers. You take Dan and Roka separately, and it is a force to be reckoned with. You put them together, and to keep up with that on their second ever match, like this is a one-in-one -one team, but the negative one is against the Founding Fathers. So I am impossibly proud of them. Their future couldn't be brighter. And they also play tactically brilliantly. Not only did they not mess up when they didn't know things, but when they weren't quite sure, they used all their techniques well, and their knowledge is impressive. People thought they were a very similar pair in their knowledge, but every single game we've played has showed they know way more than people expect, and I still support them not seeing the hustle. So I'm, I'm proud of them through and through. I think this is the best case scenario short of the win. This is the best L we could have hoped for, and I'm really proud of it. Well, Perry, bouncing back to you here, too, because uh, it looks obviously from the, just the tournament itself is the last thing we have going and then the spectacular. And it looks like this season that uh, the season has come to close. Right. But the question I have for both you and Haley is now in the off season, as you do, you hope that you go back to Koi, that whether it is getting uh, signed or going in the draft, if so, or if not playing for another manager what's the prep like and is a championship run for scary perry is that something that you want to be on the horizon i have been so concerned about all of these matches i have not given that a second thought but now that you bring the question up i don't want to be with any other manager but coy i don't know what kind of control i have over that but if i have <laughs> any say i don't want to go anywhere and one of the things that I do have control over that I am certain about is that I really want to keep playing. I, I really have had a blast. And I feel like, especially right now with what's going on and being stuck at home, Schmodown has actually truly been a bright spot in this period of time. And I appreciate you guys having me back. And I mean, what an honor, one, to have Haley as my teammate. And when I think about some of the people that I've played, some of the Schmodown champions that I've played, I mean, really, like, what an honor to have had this experience this season. Haley, same question for you. You know, in your know, offseason, you'll be coming up to yet another season um, with the Schmodown. We hope to have you back. I hope that you want to come back. And uh, if you did choose, choose to come back, is it, you know, with, with Koi, without Koi, is there another run? Do you want, would you like to be paired with Perry? And what, what would your ideal season eight look like? Oh, if I had my druthers, I'd stay put in this happy, what I call it a happy little hug. I want to stay there. I, I love these guys. I, obviously, everyone knows I love Perry. She's one of my best friends. Um, Koi is a gem. Our whole faction is wonderful kind people and I, I personally wouldn't have it any other way um and yeah it's this thing where I, I keep playing strong games but then losing against some titan like I lost to Ethan Irwin uh in that second live match which I think I'm still traumatized over but it was like uh I, I don't get to play as much as I would like to so I hope for a better season next time although I loved playing with Perry and this has all been really wonderful well, it's been a pleasure to have both you guys here, too. And obviously, Koi Jandru, we will see you in the spectacular as Shazam will defend those team championships against whoever wins here uh, in these next couple of weeks. So once again, Harry, Haley, Koi, thank you guys very much. Really appreciate it. Great match here today. Thanks. Thanks, right. guys. Going to remove the witching power and and what a fight it was what a match it was and it's a pleasure to have um both Haley and perry back and to see that excitement you and i worked with perry for many years and we said it how competitive she is but the fact that she's being competitive and having fun that is scary 
for a lot of people because if she's able to, if she locks in, I could see Haley and Perry going in on a, uh, a team's title run because both of their matches, there's set that seven point deficit to come back from that. That's not easy, right? The second part of that is going toe to toe and scrapping with the, the former champions. Something to be proud of. Hey, win or lose, you want to be in every match you play, and especially when those matches are against legends, titans of the game, as Haley Fouch would say. I think that that is a worthy chip to have and something to really build upon for next season. Perry and Haley, whether we used to see them around the collider offices or across the street at the Burbank Beer Festival, but now raising a glass is the founding fathers, Christian, as Gucci and his two favorite sons, John Roca and Dan Merle, progress and take on a very tough test in final exam. How do you see that one shaking out? It's going to be tough. I mean, I think that Dan and Roka said it um, said it, it, it best. They're both strong competitors, Lon and, and Paul, and they work together very well. But so do Dan and John. So this is uh, this is going to be, they're going to earn it. Whoever wins is going to earn it. And on the other side of that is, <laughs> it's a, it's going to be a scrap between either Deception, who I'm sure that Dan and uh, Roka are just getting sick of hearing about Adam Collins, and, and you know, or you're going to get the, uh, the odd couple, so that's another one. You know, I'm sure that they'd want to play in Draco and Snyder. So it, it, it all these teams that are left right now, it, it could go either way. We're going to have an incredible spectacular because Shazam's going to have their hands full with any one of those teams. Yes, we are, partner. It's going to be interesting as we get to the Schmodown Spectacular. But lest we forget, hey, we still got a bunch of tournament matches left to go and a whole lot of other goodies around the movie trivia Schmodown. So if you're relatively new to our world, check out the Patreon right now. Select which tier is right for you. That $10 one, she's a doozy. You get all the pay-per-view matches each and every month. Check out the Facebook group and enjoy us in podcast form because sometimes... We're just too darn handsome to look at. Christian, anything else you want to say before we say good night? That's it, everybody. Just make sure that you go on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join today. Very, very helpful. It keeps the show going. It's kept the show alive since 2017. And if you're able to do it, please go on over there and check out what is right for you. For Mark Ellis, for the great team over here on the Movie Trivia Schmodown side, and for me, thank you so very much. We'll see you next time.